Hey guys, this is MJ, the student actuary, and tonight we're going to be talking about CA1. Um, this is just going to be a short introduction video um, to the subject, and yeah, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. But the most important thing to realize about CA1 is this. It's very difficult. It is most likely going to be the hardest exam you will ever write for the associate level. Um, I haven't done the fellowship exam yet, so I can't compare it to that. But I would say it's even more difficult than the specialist subjects. So CA1 is very difficult. So if you're going to study or you're thinking of studying for this, um, get ready for one hell of a ride. And the reason it's, it's so difficult is because you have lots to learn. I mean lots, like like lots, okay, it's it's a lot to learn. Um, and you don't just, um, you know, they don't say, oh, give us the 10 points for this, and you just write out your 10 points, no. They'll give you some sort of scenario or exam question, and you first have to figure out, okay, which list of all this information do I need to apply? Then you need to think of what points of those do I need to apply, and you have to still relate it to the question. So exam technique is incredibly important as well as having a big fat memory and the reason why you need a big fat memory is let's just look quickly at um, the 48 yes there are 48 chapters um, I mean the, the CT courses have like 10 to 14 chapters this is 48 and let's check it's all about um, how to do a professional job, what are stakeholders, external environment, regulation, then there's a whole bunch of stuff on finance, on product design, on life insurance, on general insurance, on valuing assets, on investment strategies, there's stuff on data and valuing liabilities and making models and setting assumptions and then there's this whole thing on risk and you know what is risk management, what are the risk management tools you can use, how do you manage capital, there's a lot, a lot of material. So how do you go about studying a giant uh, subject like this? Well, there's various study techniques you could do. Um, I mean, one, for example, is to read the objectives, get an overview of what, you, what is expected of you. It will be very overwhelming. You'll be like, oh my gosh, can I even do this? Then you're going to read the summaries. That will take you a long time because even the summaries, there's lots of them. You're then going to study the notes and make some annotations uh, that also take a long time. And when I mean a long time, I'm talking months here. And then you're going to read the summaries again and again and again. Um, you could do other types of study methods, but the general idea is you want to have a broad overview, then dig deeper and add layers and layers onto that information and then distill what are the core concepts. Um, what you also want to do when you, when I say study the notes, this is kind of what you, what I mean by point three. Let's just talk about that more in depth. Um, I mean, question the material. Um, think of possible exam questions that they could ask. Um, annotate the notes with your own ideas. So if they're talking about um, emerging markets and you've read something about emerging markets, I don't know, the previous week, write down how that related to this. So engage with the concepts. What you also want to do is isolate the key points. So highlight or make little mind maps or whatever you do. Um, and then with these key points, you're going to need to use some sort of memory aids in order to remember them. And there's going to be lots of them. I came up with some really crazy ones. I think I had Caterpillar for the emerging markets. Um, I still remember some of those things. So they, they are quite powerful. Um, you, not, munomics. I don't know, that's a funny word to say. Uh, anyway, back to it. Um, attempt the questions before looking at the answers. Now, lazy studying people, they like to read the question, they like to read the answer, and they go, oh, I would have known that. No, do the questions before looking at the answers. Stretch your mind. I mean, these study sessions must be intense. Your brain must really hurt after it. And of course, practice um, under exam conditions when you do past papers and do lots of past papers. You want to look to get at least 10 past papers done. Uh, well, 10 years worth of past papers and there's two exams per year. So that's 20. So this, this is hardcore, guys. I mean, 
we're not messing around anymore. CA1 is where a lot of people do drop out of the, the profession because it is very difficult. But you can do it. You can do it. All you need to do is just give yourself enough time. Um, I would recommend giving yourself six months full-time studying. This is what, what I had when I was at university. Um, I studied a month before university started, then we had our lectures, and then we had a month off before we actually wrote the exam. And that was six months of, like I said, full-time studying. If someone had a 21st, like two weeks before the exam, I was like, sorry, I can't go, I'm studying. It, it's as crazy as that. Um, if you are working, I would recommend 15 months, but that is just a recommendation. I have no experience on what part-time is. So if you've done this course before, please let us know in the comment section below how much time you need to do it part-time. Um, you might need less if you're working in certain fields because you'll grasp the concepts better, but I don't know. Part-time, just give yourself lots and lots of time. Okay. Now that you've given yourself time, you're also going to be needing to purchase some resources. Now, if you're working, you can um, charge your company, if it's an actuarial training office, for this because it's, it's going to cost around 650 British pounds. I couldn't find the pound symbol on my keyboard, so I just wrote British pounds. Um, that's a lot of money. I mean, in my currency, that's, that's high. Um, I don't even know what the British exchange rate is at the moment, but I know it's a lot of money. So anyway, what, what are the five things that you need? You want the combined material pack. Uh, this will have your course notes, your question and answers, and a whole bunch of other things. That's the main thing you need. So if you self-funding, you don't have a lot of money, get the CEMP. That's the most important thing. I really enjoyed the online classroom. It helped me a lot to understand how to turn the information into exam questions. So that was really cool. You do need internet access for that though. Flashcards, um, they also, they helped me big time. I actually made a lot of my notes from that. Instead of using the summaries at the back, I used the flashcards. Because they also, they distill the key points for you. So they almost help you with one of your stages of studying. Um, sound revision, that's great um, when you're driving to work or you're driving to class is to listen to these things. Also, um, before you sleep, listen to them. When you're in the bath, listen to them. When you're on a date, listen to them. Just, well, you shouldn't be on a date during those six months. Just, but keep listening to those things. And then, when you come towards the end of your studying or the final month, put all those things away and just focus on this thing called asset. And what asset is, it's past papers with solutions. But not only does it have the solutions, they've um, the actuarial education company, which is amazing, just go visit their site this week and buy all this stuff. Um, they write more than what is required for the answer, and they'll explain more and they'll give you exam techniques. And it is a very, very valuable asset. And that, I think that's even why they call it asset. I don't know. So, those five things are incredibly important. Uh, they are expensive, but they are worth every single penny. Um, finally, one way I'm going to try to help you guys is when I studied for this course, I actually made my own videos. So it was one of the, my study techniques. I, I had all my notes were electronic. Um, I did that just so that I could have more pictures and there's so much that I would have killed too many trees if I had put it in books. So I made them electronic and I also made them videos where I spoke to myself. Now, they were made in 2013, so they might be a little bit outdated. And my, my mnemonics and my memory things um, may be a little bit weird. And I'm hoping I'm not going to be infringing on any of the copyright. Um, so I'm going to upload them. If there are legal issues, I will have to take them down. So watch them when they come out. And yeah, I hope you enjoy them. But know that they're not, you can't substitute, you can't watch my videos instead of studying. Uh, you watch these videos just as an alternative, as a refresher, or as an introduction. But CA1 is intense, so good luck. And if you pass this exam, yeah, you deserve a high five from every person you meet. So good luck, and um, yeah, you are very brave for attempting this exam. Cheers.